Hello there, it's Phil here from Dad Stuff, and I want to talk to you today about a, um, a problem that I've been trying to solve, which is how to install a heated towel rail. But you can see that this is the type of heated towel rail that is going to be both electric, so it's got um, an electric element, and connected to the central heating. So a radiator has come off the wall, this towel radiator is going to replace it. And so I was trying to, to make sense of how does it control whether it's on the electric programmer or whether it's being heated by the central heating flow. So it turns out that it can't do both. You have to decide if it's one or the other at any time of year. So for example, you might say that in the summer, the central heating is not going to be on. So in the summer, you would need to turn off the lock shield valve. So this is the lock shield valve, which is going to get screwed in. So in the summer, you're going to turn off the lock shield valve. So no flow will go through the radiator. Turn off the TRV on the other side of the radiator. And then the, the heating element is completely controlled by the, the programmer, which is going to be on the wall. So, for example, I can keep it on really low all the time, or I can put it on for so many hours. Um, you can have it how you want it to work. But perhaps in the cooler time of year, in the winter, I might want to have it so that the tower radiator is being fed with hot water from the hot water system, from the central heating. So I'll simply open the TRV on the other side and I'll set open the, the lock shield on the other side and then the central heating when it's on will come through the towel radiator. So it can't be both. You certainly don't want to have it so that your TRV is open and your um, lock shield is open because otherwise the little element that's inside your heated towel rail is going to be trying to do the central heating for the house. That's a really bad idea. You'll end up with a, with a big bill. Now, the other thing I've learned is that when you put in the lock shield into the bottom of the heated towel rail, there's no physical O-ring or washer or olive which stops this leak. So in this situation, the thing that you have to use is PTFE tape. So the PTFE tape is cheap, but sometimes people use it wrong. This is the way that I've always found the easiest way to put on the PTFE tape. So if you're right-handed, hold the PTFE tape in your right hand. Hold the lock shield, for example, in your left hand. So start by putting your thumb on and you're going to go around clockwise. Now, I find that about five turns is enough. All the time I keep it under tension. That's two, three, four, five. Now, I don't know if all PTFE tape is the same thickness. Perhaps some thick, some thin. Some manufacturers recommend three turns, perhaps some PTFE tape is thinner and you need five or six turns. So the PTFE tape is going to form the seal. So you don't keep winding it in, you just wind it in because in the end of this towel radiator, so it's going to go into this hole on the towel radiator, but you can see there is no physical stop or o-ring. So you are reliant upon the PTFE tape in this scenario. So that's the way that's the way I'm gonna do it. I'm just a a DIYer. This is just dad stuff. This is me working out how I do things and then sharing with you. So hopefully there should be um, absolutely no leaks from this. And uh, now we understand exactly how a towel rail will work if you've got both an electric element and you're going to run it on your central heating system. It can't be both, it's got to be one or the other, electric or central heating. Hope that helps, thank you very much.
Bye-bye.